the reconquering mega eagle. Mm. So the uh, official TCME unboxing parang, uh, as, as you may well remember, the last thing I unboxed with this was my finger. Um, so it's nice to be to be uh, using it on um, a tool again and not myself. There we go. Nice box. Uh, it gives you a load of information on the outside, tells you what it will and won't cut. Um, cut steel, aluminium, wood with one saw and one blade. Sounds promising, eh? Yeah, the instruction leaflet there. What have we got? A uh, bunch of Allen keys, spare brushes for the motor, some rubber pads, no idea what they're for yet. And a uh, uh, looks like a little roller. Again, we'll find out what that's all for. Oh, oh, oh. Look at this, hey! I'm a I'm a happy chappy. I like free stuff and I like tools. So this is like a this is a good day for me. You know that, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> um, okay. What's that? I need to need to get into this. Don't we? Chains to stop it, um, stop it coming up. I already don't like this chain. Uh, there's a, a very, very good chance that I'm going to remove this chain before the end of this video, uh, but I'll give it the benefit of a doubt. Um, okay, uh, so what have we got? A pretty compact unit, um, steel base. Uh, Pros and cons, like a lot of them have got uh, cast alley bases, but um, well, uh, personally, I can see the merits of a steel base, like a cast alley base uh, with big lumps of steel. If you're if you're chopping up big bits, like you run a real risk of smashing the base, you know, cracking it, and then the whole saw's not usable. With a with a steel base, if you go too far with it, then you know you're going to start off just denting it, and then uh, then you're going to change the shape of it. So you'll still be able to use the saw, it probably wouldn't be accurate anymore, but um, uh, it's really light, really light. You definitely want to fix this down. Clamp it down, I don't know. Um, we've got uh, pretty chunky screw fed on the vice I'd say that's about 16 mil so nice and heavy um, not very stable uh, okay we can angle this that's nice the operation of that that locking mechanism is is nice and then, um, we can we can cut things at an angle. That's good. That's good. We're gonna we're gonna try that out in a bit. Yeah. Um, how accurate the scale is on the side, I do not know. It'd probably be best to check it. But um, hopefully, it's it's spot on. Um, there appears to be a more rearward hole that we can fix this back plate in, um, and that'll give us. Give us the ability to cut thicker material, I suppose. Okay. So the guard's automatic. Um, that's nice. Nicely built. Nicely built. I'm just, just trying to judge how easy it'd be to chop your finger off, I suppose. Um, you can you can pull this down without touching anything. I know uh, some saws have a have a second trigger. Um, but you can't switch it on without pressing two buttons, so that's the safety there. I suppose. Um, you can't just pull the trigger, you've got to press the, uh, the thumb button first. Um, 
but you can't spin the blade up without without pressing two buttons. So that's that's pretty safe, I suppose. Uh, what we got? Everything on the on a hot end is uh, like powder coated, die cast, alley or zinc. I don't know. And then it's got um, up from the the cover on the side, which is uh, which is a pressed steel cover. Yeah. So you're not going to get plastic getting too hot there. Um, There's no flex in it. There's no flex in it. Or maybe those, it's if you really lean on it, you can get it to move around a bit at that knuckle joint. But um, yeah, I mean, this, this, this looks like quite a nice tool, you know. Um, let's work through the box of bits that they sent us and um, start from there, I suppose. Okay, let's cut up the, the random stuff that they sent us. We'll do a lucky dip, go in the box. What's this? Ah, oh, a bit of a, a bit of two inch angle. Okay, I don't know what the best way to cut this would be. I suppose, like that. Uh -huh. That is lovely and fast, I like this. Um, what sort of edge? Completely cold to the touch. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? Yeah, if that was an abrasive saw, it would have taken um, a good deal longer and you wouldn't be able to touch it. This is, uh, this is promising, folks. I'm gonna keep all this. Like, you, you don't realize how, how useful these, uh, these little bits of scrap that you sent me are. Um, thank you very much for that as well, Mr. Saw. Uh, okay, so next up, we've got uh, what looks like a bit of reasonably heavy wall inch box. Um, just out of curiosity, I'm not gonna clamp this down. We didn't get a square cut because I didn't uh, didn't clamp it down, but uh, it didn't jump out all over the place. Obviously, clamp it down, it's safer, isn't it? But um, I was just curious. Okay. Um, try some tube. Okay, we've got tube. a very good demonstration as to um, why you should clamp it down, eh? Definitely clamp it down. This is teeth, it's gonna grab all the stuff unlike a uh, abrasive wheel, so uh, if I was doing that with an ab abrasive wheel uh, I would have been able to hold it in my hand but um, those teeth picked up on it, spun it right up, zing, shot it all over the place. mud in the end of it where, <laughs> where it got spat over to the other side of the uh, what's it what's name um, yeah uh, that looks like a bit of carpet trim or a bit of lino trim um, I learned my lesson we're going to clamp it all up now um, okay okay I don't even, even slowed the blade down to be honest What's next? Uh, oh, a bit of a uh, bit of alley extrusion again. Um, it, just, it just doesn't even know it's there, does it? Uh, a bit of fairly heavy all thread. This looks like um, three quarter or eighteen mil or something, you know. You heard it, it knew about it then, but it didn't argue with it, did it? And a bit of, uh, bit of 10 mil rounds. Okay, so now I, I plunge the saw into it too hard. Round stuff, you gotta be careful with round stuff, hey. Let's do that up a little bit tighter. Yeah. 
Yeah, nice, nice, nice clean cut on it. Nice clean cut. This doesn't make uh, any dust like an abrasive wheel, um, but you can see the chips. They're all blue because your your carbide. Um, the only reason these saws are possible, I suppose, is like the old-fashioned saws you see in fabricators and that they've got a they've got a big motor, really really high reduction gearbox, um, and then a, an HSS blade maybe, um, and maybe the new ones are carbide, but those uh, those saws they they only turn like 60 RPM and that maybe the blade's a bit bigger so the tip speeds you know would be a little bit higher than this saw turning at 60 RPM but then they've got a, a two foot two foot handle on them and you'll see see blokes swinging on them you know right really really putting some grunt into it but uh, but they need cutting fluid and um, so this is high speed steel they obviously need to keep it cool um, this is this is such a beautiful beautiful compromise between between everything you get you get a it's something that's affordable um, I think it's about 100 quid or so, um, you know, whereas the sort of things you see professionally in, in fabricators, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much they are new, but I've seen a few second hand for like five, six hundred quid and that. Um, so they've got a big heavy gearbox and the blades are there as well. Um, or, or you've got the abrasive wheels and they're, they're similar sort of money to this. I think you can just about get one a little bit cheaper, but they're so much slower and they make, you know, that much, that much dust and, and sparks and stuff that... I really, really don't see why anyone would buy one now because uh, I don't know, these, these things are just well, you can see for yourself, can't they? They're, they're pretty good, pretty good. Last little bit here then. Um, let's lie that flat. You've got the biggest chance of kicking it up that way. Um, put it on the edge, just out of curiosity. It's just fine, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a perfect edge, but what what more do you want, eh? Right. Okay, cool. That's the boring bit out of the way. Let's make a stand for this thing because I do like it. Okay, so here's the one but two. I want to make a stand out of it. Um, I just built a roof rack for my truck out of it. I've got loads left over pretty cheap to get hold of um, or I paid about 14 pound plus plus fat for each six meter length um, so I got uh, a few few extra lengths um, and now I'm rolling in the stuff but it's a lovely beautiful lightweight uh, section to use for a stand for this saw now I'm not going to install this in one spot permanently in my workshop uh, I don't have the space for it so um, if I was you know for instance processing six meter lengths of one by two um, you know, you got to have a 12 foot clear workshop for that, haven't you? Uh, if you like, if you just wanted to take a bit off the end, um, um, so this is, this is gonna have to be portable, so nice and light. Um, I want it to have a very small footprint when I'm not using it.
So here's the saw and its little stand that I made. A um, couple of bags of couple of bags of sand on the base just to to hold it. It's not going anywhere like that. Um, I haven't got any props up because all I want to do now is process all this scrap aluminium. So there's a couple of greenhouses, running border for a Zuzi Trooper, uh, some steps, some fittings for a uh, um, shower enclosure and that. And um, basically, rather than rather than throw all this stuff away, um, I want to melt it down and turn it into other stuff um, for another little project. Um, but obviously, I can't I can't put these in my melting pot. My melting pot is only um, about 60, 60 mil wide by, I don't know, I can fit stuff in there that's about eight, nine inches long, um, 200 mil or something. So most of this stuff can't go in as it is. So I'm gonna see how quickly I can turn all of this scrap into uh, lengths, of, um, lengths of metal that I'll be able to fit in my melting pot. I've now got quite a respectable pile of uh, chopped up bits of aluminium. But... So what's the verdict on this little sawing? Um, I don't know. Uh, what I'll say is that if you buy a cut off saw, you've got to understand it's a, it's a tool for the primary processing of a material, yeah? So you can't expect a saw like this to make finished cuts. So if you go and buy this, with that in mind, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised how accurate it is, and you'll find that uh, with a lot of projects, you don't need to do any sec secondary finishing because the cut, the cut itself, is really good and clean. But in order to make this um, what compact and lightweight, the the bed's very small, um, which is always going to affect um, you know the accuracy of your cut. If you want, if you want something specifically to make final cuts, then these guys do uh, metal cutting miter saws as well, which are pretty good. I've owned one for the last um, four or five years now. Um, it's still going strong, um, but the thing with that is I've used that as a as a chop-off saw. I've thrown lumps of timber at it. It, it lives, you know, and I can make it accurate again, but it would take a bit of tweaking. Um, whereas this is designed for the slightly more demanding uh, environment of having big lumps of stuff thrown at it. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Um, there's nothing quite like this on the market, yeah? In, in order to want to buy this particular tool, um, first off, you can get abrasive discs cheaper. Uh, as someone who used to use an abrasive disc cut-off tool, I'm very aware of all their faults, so um, I will never go back. Um, you know, like for the for the same money as this, you can get basically the the saw that I used to have, um, which is a fourteen inch. I think it's fourteen inch, maybe twelve, maybe ten. I don't know. I can't remember now. Um, abrasive disc cut off, um, and the the cheap ones are, are really quite nasty. You know, the uh, the clamp's half the size of this one. Yeah, it's a bigger saw, so like instantly your 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 accuracy is terrible. Um, the blades when they're when they're new. And it's only when the blade is new uh, on the on the abrasive wheel saws that they're capable of cutting the, the rated 90 millimeters. I think uh, they won't quite do four inch, but 90 mil. So you'll only be able to do that with a brand new blade. Um, as soon as that blade starts wearing, then you can you know knock off however much the blade is worn to your to your 
um, your, your cutting specs basically. So um, when the blade's halfway through its life, it will only cut as much as this saw because this this blade never wears down. The teeth will wear, but it won't affect the uh, the max depth of cut, for instance. You know, um, <clears throat> and then uh, they're not really built very very strong. This this on the other hand, they've used some really really heavy car I mean, it's it's a very light tool. Uh, I think they've achieved that by by making it you know compact, but they haven't haven't scrimped on the material. So um, we're all like die cast alley. Um, and nice, nice hard nylon, you know, glass, glass filled nylon and that, like, the fence, the fence isn't great, I'm not going to lie to you, um, but like I say, it's a, it's a cut off tool, um, it's a really, really benefit someone, like, this is a, a sort of a niche market tool, I suppose, because a lot of people that are that want a cut-off tool are going to want to cut um, bigger sections. But if you're if you're after portability, um, the TCT blade, you know, and um, you know, competitive price, uh, and and you're not you're not going to be working with materials much over two inches then like this is this is like, the only the only tool that fits this description you know like um i'm pretty sure looking at how it's made and how i've abused it already over the last day like you could throw this into the back of the van literally throw it into the back of the van and uh and, you know dump dump 15 bags of plaster on it and then pull it out from underneath with the flex and it'll still be fine um it is it is um you know a rugged little sort this cuts this cuts through steel quicker than my old like, ten or fourteen inch chop saw used to like the abrasive cut off tool like that would that would take um you know like two or three times longer on on the on the same cut as, as this thing does so it's faster but um but you got you got to fit into that into that sort of uh, category these guys do. Like I say, the metal cutting, the metal cutting miter saws, and they've got one that's um, like priced a little bit less than this. Um, it's not, it's, it's never going to be as rugged because it's not, you know, it's designed for fine stuff. You can't have, you can't have, uh, you know, no, one, you can't have a, a vernier caliper and use it as an Allen wrench. You know, use it as a adjustable spanner. Can you? <laughs> you know, it's like the two things, two things don't go together. You either you have a tool that's uh, accurate and not so rugged, or or, or vice versa, and I'm, you know, um, fortunately these guys have sent me a uh, a mitre saw as well, so uh, I'll have to test that soon. But um, I'd, like, I'd like to use it to make a work, you know, same way I use this to make a stand for itself. I'm going to use the mitre saw to make a, a sort of workstation for the mitre saw itself, um, which which would be good uh, if I made that workstation so the mitre saw lifted off the top and you can put other things in the top, like convert it to a, a router bench. That'd be great, especially if um, these guys at Evolution want to send me a new router. That you know, that'd make it a better video, I think. Um, so, so maybe you could think about that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if you're if you're watching this on their on their website or something, or through their YouTube channel, this I am Turbo Concrete Mega Eagle. Like, be sure to check my channel out. Like, it's all all good with lots of fun stuff and that. And um, you know, if you're one of my subscribers or you just found found this video on the internet somewhere. Go and check Evolution out because they've got, you know, like like I saw, they've got lots of um, <clears throat> lots of sort of tools that are, uh, you know, built built really well, like um, like the branded tools, but you know, at, at, a, at a good competitive price and stuff like this, like that, that no one else actually makes. So uh, it's well worth checking their website out just to have a look at what they do. Um, all available at Screwfix and like you know, it's it's cheap and like if you buy stuff from Screwfix, you got a uh, you got a, a good good bit of comeback there. It's not like buying unbranded stuff off eBay that is the only way you're gonna to get tools cheaper, but at the same time, you know, you've got no comeback then if you like if you use it once and then it breaks you that's it for you, and <laughs> you've lost all your money, whereas at least you know, Screwfix are always really happy to help if you've got problems in it. Not that I don't think you would with the evolution tool. Like I say, I've had my mitre saw for um four or five years now and I've I've really given that poor saw some stick and it's like, you know, Always comes back for more, doesn't it? But anyway, that's me, Toby Kong with Mary Eagle, and please like and subscribe. And uh, well, um, thank you very much for sending me this saw, guys. I uh, 
you know, look forward to, to getting the racker plate that you promised me. Cheers.